happen this year. I have to make a commitment that next year is not going to be like this. We're going to make a plan and stick to it and put it out there publicly by a deadline that this driving is going to be done in a way that's sensitive to our children's education, the sanity of the drivers, the safety, and you know everything else that we do. I believe if you have less complaint, it's because they are not logging it in. School bus drivers are mandated to follow the route exactly as it's written. And if they deviate from the route, they're violated, and the violation is anywhere between $200 and $700, which they end up paying. The information that you have given about the limited time is incorrect according to the uh, uh, website. So here, um, I'm going to give it to her. I can assure you that if this were on a Saturday in a town hall setting, the room would be full. And I think you have to provide child care and transportation. I do find that the customer service of OPT is deplorable. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of us work in corporate America, you plan for it. If you don't plan for it, you're out of business. So, so if, if you're going to sit on the bus for two hours, I'd say provide a toilet, get some tutoring on the bus so these kids can use their time to study. Yes, good. It would appear to me that OPT has never heard of MapQuest. And I feel that it is very, very hypocritical for New York State that I can get a $50 fine if I don't have my three-point harness on, and I can get a $100 fine and three points on my license. If I have a child in my car that does, it's not in a wheel, a car seat, a booster seat, or a three-point harness, and yet thousands of children throughout the U.S. are sitting in wheelchairs that are very safely strapped into the school bus, but have no harness on, no headrest. This back and forth, is changing the routes. Did you ever ask the bus drivers how to get it done? Well, support the bus drivers. Okay. Thomas from Atlantic Bus Company and uh, rep for 1181. Uh, the overloaded bus is on the special ed routes. The drivers are told, if you don't have room on the bus, go by the stop anyway. Oh, wow. They get to the stop, the kid can't get on the bus. It's in a wheelchair, it's cold. They told me to drop off at the school and go back. It could take a half hour to an hour, and it's just unfair for the kids. Yes. So it's very oh, wow. You don't have enough buses if you have the entire block on one bus. That needs to be separated. But something has to change. It is unacceptable that the parents and the students have to take the abruptness and the rudeness and the lateness. It's unacceptable. And we want change now. These changes that you keep talking about. If you are, have been doing this job for several years and you know that in September you have 50,000 but in two weeks you're gonna have 60,000, I wouldn't wait for the 10,000 more to show up. I would have a plan B. Um, how come five and six year olds are allowed to ride in the same bus with 15 and 16 year olds? Ooh. Every parent in this room has a child with special needs. Do you know what that's about? Do you know what it's like to raise a child with learning disabilities that has to get a number two on that test? that has to score level three in order to be promoted, and the only thing that these parents want are their kids to get to school on time and safe. That's right. That is number one. We can't, that's the way we start our day. Where is it getting fixed? Where is the accountability? I'd like to know how many people here have had kids that are on three or four different rounds this year, and how many people here have their children have been late for school by at least an hour, wow. sometimes two. Wow. Um, because of the, um, the uh, but in fact, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the, at the numbers of complaints about late buses, actually the number is down. I know that's not a satisfying answer. No. Uh, Paul Weinig, our Director of School Bus Safety, and Ralph Valente, our Director of Investigations, are on their way. Um, there was a problem with the meeting invitation, so they actually went to the downtown locations. Um, uh, you know, uh, if, if the limited time is not on the IEP, then we don't, we don't bus to it. I mean, I, I clock and they're supposed to wait three minutes. three minutes. Okay, so do you work for DOE or do you work for OPT? DOE is the division, or OPT is the division of part of DOE. Okay, so who do you report to? I report to a guy named Jeff Goldstein. Who reports to? Jeff Beach has been here. The, the, the limited time, you should go tell the people over there your, your ID number so we can fix your route. But, but just, um, we'll, we'll give you extra special attention. Okay. We'll give you extra special attention. Okay. We'll give
give you extra special attention. It's not too cool to be ridiculed, but you brought this up on your.